my uh, next guest this evening won a Pulitzer Prize for his first book, Angela's Ashes, which has been on the New York Times bestseller list for a record 103 weeks. Please welcome Mr. Frank McCourt. <laughs> You know, I want to start off uh, by saying 103 weeks. That's just amazing. Two years. I've worked that out myself. Yeah, that's actually thanks. pretty. <laughs> 103 weeks. That's incredible. But it brings up a uh, it brings up a problem. I come from an Irish family. I know that that uh, Irish people getting praise or having success is it can be a problem with other Irish people, can't it? Yeah, there's something in Ireland called begrudgery. Raise your head and they chop it off. If you uh, if you become successful, you better you better pr you better prove it. Uh, it. As a matter of fact, there's an Irish, a definition of Irish Alzheimer's. You forget everything but the grudge. <laughs> I, well, you know what's amazing uh, about it is that it, it, there is something there. They 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 want you to do well. They wish you well, but they don't want you to put on airs. No, Isn't you can't right? put on. Oh no, you can't put on airs because. Uh, uh, that's an affectation. It, it belongs. That belongs in the material world. And we know from being good Roman Catholics that the only thing that matters that matters is the next world, yeah. where you'll get your award and your bed in heaven and so on. Right. So, so, so you're not we're, supposed we're, to. We're, you're not supposed to look oh, like no, you're too proud. No, don't flaunt it. Right. So when people say to you, "Congratulations, 103 yeah. weeks on the best yeah. list," you I'm, hang your head in shame. I, I, I'm. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm taking a, a course in remedial humility. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, very good. I'd like to join and that. And it's easy. It's easy for me to be humble anyway because this whole thing is a big surprise to me. I didn't expect. I wrote a book ma mainly about poverty and misery with a little, mm -hmm. a little humor here and then. I didn't expect the people were going to take to it like this. I, I just got a letter from a, a, a surgeon in India, Pondicherry. He said I was his brother <laughs> because he had he had a poor upbringing. I, if I had grown up in India, I'd been I'd been untouchable. Why is that? Well, kind of, you know, we were so low on the social scale in Ireland. We were just above inanimate matter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only thing is we had an appetite, so we were, we, we were uh, classified as animate <laughs> uh, human beings. But you, uh, you, you, right. I mean, you talk about it so much in the book, about your humble beginnings, and, and they continued even here in New York when you moved here. Well, the humble you, beginnings, for, they, they fought, even now I have, I'm, I'm a very humble man as I sit here talking to you. I, I'm surprised by all of this. When I, when I came to New York, I had, I had no education. I left school when I was 13. Mm -hmm. And the only job I could get was uh, in the Biltmore Hotel, which was over near Grand Central. And I'm the guy, uh, you, you were one of them. The, these, well, this was a little early for your time. The, the Ivy Lake kids would come down and the, and the Radcliffe's, uh, Bryn Mawr, uh, Vassar mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. And they'd, they'd hang around the lobby in the Biltmore Hotel on Thursday afternoon. It was a pickup fest, Thursday and Friday. And I'm the one who went around with the broom and the, and, and, and the dustpan and right. cleaned up for, uh, after these uh, waspy types. I, and most of the time I, ke I kept... How did I become a wasp? <laughs> Someone what, call my mother. What, She'd be so delighted that we're Protestant what, now, you know? This is, uh, this is what you were hanging out with and it rubs off. Oh, there you go. All right. So, and I was looking at those girls, those girls from Vassar and places like that. Mm -hmm. And I, they, were, they were all long-legged and had auburn hair and... And, 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 and bosoms that were apocalyptic. <laughs> and and, uh, and, and I, I committed that dreadful sin. I coveted them. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because you're not, thou shalt not covet the neighbor's wife, even right. if that one. So I spent a lot of time coveting, right. which, which is a sin. I still have to go to confession over that one. <laughs> and uh, for one reason or another, they took me off that job. Mm -hmm. And in the lobby and in the 19th floor, they had cages, birds, canaries. And they put me in charge, of, they took me away from human beings, so they put me in charge of the birds. Because you were inanimate matter. I was just, or animate yeah. matter, just well, barely. Slightly animate, yeah. yeah, yeah. Slightly, uh, slightly articulate. <laughs> so they, they gave me the job of, of keeping the bird cages clean and keeping the birds fed and watered. That, and then I, uh, it was all, it, I, you know, I really got weary of those birds because I was, I was doing a bit of drinking in those days up in down Third Avenue, which was one long Irish bar. I fell into the stereotype of the drinking mm -hmm. Irishman, and um, I'd, uh, I'd stay, and I'd, I'd neglect the birds, and they began to die, and I got, des <laughs> I got desperate, because this is the only job I had. Mm -hmm. what was, I didn't have a high school diploma that pitched me out into the street, and I had to get a job as a, I don't know, a politician or something. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so, or talk uh, show host. Yeah. <laughs> Something desperate. I'd be all right. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 uh, the birds began to uh, to die, and uh, and and what I did was uh, to 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 save myself. I I climbed up my aluminum ladder and I took them and glued them to their perches <laughs> so that they wouldn't. I mean, they weren't seeing much, but they could be seen. Yeah. And, 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 uh -huh. and my my boss would, would I I'd, I'd keep my job, but then I got a I had a three day weekend one time around St Patrick's Day, mm -hmm. and of course I went off and I roistered around, and when I got back, there was a note on my time card: report to the superintendent, Mr Carey. He said McCourt, what did you do to the birds? <laughs> I said, what birds, Mr Carey? I'm not talking about the damn swallows of Capistrano. <laughs> I'm talking about 39 canaries dead in their cages. I said, oh, well, they, they must have died while I was out, Mr. Carey. Oh, yeah, what they do? Get up and glue themselves to their perches before they... <laughs> <laughs> so that... And, uh, lost. A really indefensible <laughs> position. Uh, I'm not... Uh, my subscription to the Audubon Society has expired. <laughs> it will now, yeah. I want to mention this before, I, I wish we had more time, but I want to mention you're doing a musical review now. The, I, well, I, I, did a, I, I put together a thing called uh, The Irish and How They Got That, which, which is playing at the Irish Repertory Theatre on 22nd mm -hmm. Street. It's all about the Irish and how they got the way you know. Uh, uh, well, I don't know what brought I was hanging friend. out with the Waspy well, girls yeah, with the bosoms. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I've lost you, touch with you, my Irish roots. You were, you were moving up. I still, uh, I still covet Wasp. I, I married one. You did? I did. One of those Biltmore Hotel types and uh, I haven't recovered from it. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it, it well, my mother used to say, stick with your own. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're doing what you're doing. The Irish and how they got that way is now playing at the Irish Repertory Theatre in New York City. And if you haven't read Angela's Ashes, go out, read the book. It's uh, simply amazing. Frank, thank you so much thank for coming back. Frank, record, everybody. We'll take a break. We'll be right back.